Athens, Georgia, where today East meets West. Two schools with great history and tradition get together for the very first time as SEC opponents, believe it or not. A big part of Texas A&M's tradition made a road trip last night. The midnight yell wasn't at Kyle Field, but rather Buford, Georgia, about 50 miles west of Athens. And moments ago, a once-a-year tradition took place in Athens, Senior Day. J.R. Reed making his 40th straight start for the Bulldogs. Brian Harriet, such a huge part of the offense as both a runner and a receiver. David Marshall, his 42nd game on the defensive line for the Dogs. And maybe only place in college football where the top ovation is saved for the kicker, Rodrigo Blankenship, one of 24 seniors honored here today. And with that, the Home Depot SCC on CBS brings us to a rainy Vince Dooley Field at Sanford Stadium. Between the hedges and our matchup, the Aggies of Texas A&M on the road against the number four team in the country, the Georgia Bulldogs. And we welcome you, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler, my partner, as always is Gary Danielson. We've seen these two teams throughout the year, Gary. Texas A&M has been growing. Georgia's right where they want to be. Three times now the SEC East champ. Really interesting, yes. Georgia wants to take those next steps. They want to get a little more offense. They know they compete for the national championship. They know they're good at us. They want a little more points. Texas A&M wants to see if they can match up. They know they got this game and LSU to see where they got to go to get there next year. Well, you mentioned the Georgia offense. Right now, their defense is where they're hanging their hat. It is unbelievable. They've got so many great players, whether they're first string, second string, doesn't matter. They come in, might play 25 different players, and you can't tell the top guy from the bottom guy. They are a championship defense and getting better every week. What a thing to watch. They have a lot of speed on that defense. I think they're going to have their hands full today. This is a Texas A&M team that right. we saw against Alabama since that time they're playing their best football. They are. they got a couple things really going for them. they got a veteran quarterback that Georgia has not seen all year since the Notre Dame game. Kellen Mond might be the best combination they're going to face all year, thrower and runner. And since we've seen him, he's now got some help. He's got two runners back there. Isaiah Speller, the true freshman, four 100-yard games already. And Cordarian Richardson, 240-pound sledgehammer, two guys to help Jimbo's offense go here today. Well, they might need those running backs because it's a soggy field right now. With more on that, third member of our team is Jamie Erdahl. It is soggy because, Brad, in the last hour before kickoff, nearly two-tenths of an inch of rain have fallen. The players, their equipment, the ball, the field are all saturated. I just saw sand thrown on the end zone to soak up some of that rainwater. I confirmed with several Georgia coaches that this weather, eerily similar to the game at home against Kentucky a month ago. Kirby Smart said in that game and this one, it becomes a ball possession and field position issue. You feel like every play, you're on the edge because one explosive play, one field goal could determine the game. Brad, to note, Jake Braun has a glove on that throwing hand. He never does that unless he has grip issues on the ball. Something to watch today. All right, Jamie, try to stay dry. It adds to the drama. The Bulldogs and the Aggies for the first time as SEC opponents. It's coming up from Athens in a moment. Welcome to Athens, Georgia, for another football Saturday in the SEC. This week, it's the Aggies versus the Bulldogs. Well, we back, we back, we back in the speakers, back in, back in, blasted in the bleachers. It's probably true what my mama said, I do it just like my daddy did. Well, we back, we back, we back in the saddle, back on stage, making the whole place rattle. Down to the end zone to the tight end for the touchdown. Gonna go deep. Blaylock, touchdown. This is the Home Depot SEC on CBS. The best game from the best conference. Thank you, Jason Aldean. 
whose new album came out yesterday, and we back is on it at Kirby Smart and his Georgia Bulldogs. On it, ready to take the field at home. They come in 9-1, and 6-1 in conference play, and very much in the discussion for not just the SEC championship, but the national title picture as well. And from College Station, Texas, to the SEC West, Jimbo Fisher and the 7-3 and Aggies of a and 7-3, but those three losses, two were to number one teams, Clemson and Alabama at the time. The other was to number eight, Auburn at the time. That is a tough schedule. Today, their dates with number four, Georgia. Next week, number one, LSU. That's how loaded the A&M schedule has been. Sixth meeting all time. Reveille's here. She and Ugga had a little uh, gathering before the game. And Georgia's going to get the football first as A&M won the toss and deferred. I do get the feeling, though, Ness, that after talking to Jimbo, he's going to be really disappointed if his team doesn't show up and play a really good football. He thinks they're ready to step up to this competition. They've won four in a row, five of their last six, and that's since we saw them against Alabama. A fired-up, rain-soaked crowd at Sanford Stadium. Braden Mann will tee it up for the Aggies. Back deep, Brian Herrian and Zamir White. And we're on the road. And at the last moment, Herrian ducks and lets it go behind him to bring it out to the 25-yard line. As we check the Chick-fil-A starting lineups. And it all starts with junior Jake Fromm. His 39th start, 32 and 6 as a starting quarterback. And the rest of the offense with Jake looks like this. Lawrence Cager will keep our eye on him. He warmed up. He is ready to go, we think, but he is suffering with rib and shoulder problems. DeAndre Swift and Jake Fromm start things off in the Georgia backfield. And it's a toss to Swift trying to get to the corner. He's going to get dumped for a big loss on the opening play by Anthony Hines, the outside linebacker. Blitz coming off the corner. Fromm has to get rid of it in a hurry. Lofts it out incomplete. It would have been out of bounds. George Pickens was the intended receiver, and Jake Fromm looks at his gloved hand as if to say, I didn't get quite what I wanted on that football. They'll start in a three wide receiver set here. Isaiah Spiller gets the handoff, and Georgia, much like the Aggies defense, a loss for Monty Rice on the opening tackle. Monty Rice lined up right there, just feels it and gets in there really quickly. Two tackles for a loss for each team. So second down at 13, and going to be second down at 18. Here we go. Last time we were here was Notre Dame doing that. Remember That's that? That's right. False start after false start in that game. And Hubert Owens signals another one of those. Carson Green, the right tackle, jumped. Definitely got a good head start. Both teams' offenses on their opening series dig themselves a hole. On the ground, Spiller dumped again. Tyler Clark, the first guy there. And coming from the secondary again in that nickel package, Mark Webb also comes off the corner and gets in there. Attacking defense, Dan Lanning, the new defensive coordinator, first year defensive coordinator, if you talk to the coaches, the one big difference they feel on first and second down, Georgia is bringing more people than in the past. Third down and 20. And Mond is going to be standing on his own goal line. No opening scores allowed by Georgia this year in the opening possession. And a and just going to play it safe here. A one-yard gain for Spiller, maybe, and it's a punting situation for the Aggies. Boy, that was ugly, wasn't it? It was. You got two really good punters here. This one's Braden Mann, but he is deep in his own end zone to take this snap. Yeah, First thing you have to do is handle the ball first exactly. before you and kick in this it. this weather, a field position game is so important. Two good punters. Let's see how they handle it. He handled the snap well. The punts. 
Backs up Dominique Blaylock to the 35, but he's got a little room to return. Blaylock to midfield. Whoa! Got hammered out of bounds, but he got a good return out of it. George is going to be in Aggieland offensively. A scary scene unfolded on the sideline last week at Auburn when Georgia Athletics photographer Chamberlain Smith was struck after a play, knocked unconscious, taken to the hospital with a concussion. I spoke to her yesterday. She's doing better. She said she's grateful for all the people who have checked in on her from around the world. And she shared the photo that she took right before she got hit. She has tremendous skill. And Brad, she's watching her dogs, cheering them on from home today. Glad you're doing better, Chamberlain. Glad you're watching. Gary, I knew you wanted to say something. Uh, thanks, Naz. I do. You know, last week in real time, I just didn't see what happened. In fact, I, I might have been the last person to see what happened. That confusion and my commentary that followed led some to conclude that I was kind of being insensitive to Chamberlain's serious situation. That certainly wasn't my intent. But I get it. That it happened, and our viewers saw it, and then simply put, I should have been better. I want to apologize to Chamberlain and our CBS viewers for that. I'm also thrilled to see that she's going to be back soon and doing well, and uh, that's the best news at all. Absolutely. The Bulldogs right now will try their second offensive series, and they've got a better spot to work from than the first time. They open up here at the 47 of Texas A&M. Give DeAndre Swift and Swift found a little opening. Number Buddy Johnson hold on for dear life, but and I think positive play for Swift. You got it, Nelson. I think that's the key player for this AM team, Buddy Johnson, the middle linebacker. How many games do we do in modern football now where we say the middle linebacker is the key player? These two teams kind of play the old style of the game. They want to run between the tackles. You already saw both inside linebackers. Honey Rice now and Buddy Johnson making plays. They have to make a lot of tackles in this game. Buddy made a lot in that Alabama game. Career high 11 in that game we saw him earlier this year. Pick up a five for the Andre Swift. Second and five for the Dogs at the 42. Swift again, now trying to get to the edge. DeAndre Swift ran out of real estate, but he got a first down. If they throw it, it's from. They're already in field goal range, although on a day like this, you never know. From delayed blitz coming. Down the sideline, Harrion can't find it. It was out of bounds anyway. Had him open. Wow, and he had a game, and he had a play. Andre White from 32 was on the opposite side, and he has Harrion. Watch this. They're trying to confuse Georgia, and look at the setup. Had man-to-man -man coverage going the opposite way. They had a big play. Rob missed him. Yep, Jake knows it. Should have hit him. And it will bring in Rodrigo Blankenship. 41-yard field goal attempt, as I said. These conditions, it's not a chip shot by any stretch, nor is a 41-yard field goal anyway, but the kick's on the way, and the senior who's been so brilliant as a Georgia kicker knocks it home. Hot rod. You have to respect the specs. Scores first for Georgia from 41 yards out. Three nothing dogs. Georgia shifting on their defensive line on first down, telling Mon, trying to throw a slant, batted up in the air, and knocked down. I think he was lucky it got it knocked down. If that wasn't knocked down, I think J.R. Reed is going to intercept that ball. Sometimes you get a break early in the game, and J.R. Reed thought he had a pick. Watch J.R. read it and get under the slant. Oh, you're right. No and he jumps up. <laughs> I got it, I got it, I, I, I don't have it. Oh, he had it. He had it red, and he was ready for it. Thorpe finalist for the top defensive back in the country. He's been a great player for Georgia. 40th straight start. I missed talking to him. You're he, not kidding. He, he's amazing. Spiller. Nothing there. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I mean, this is an offense. They ran for 340 yards last week against a, a good, pretty good South Carolina defense. They're down at 10. With three and out on their first drive, let's see if Georgia can pitch another shutout here. Minus four yards for the Aggies so far. Right now, AM could go split backs, upside down backs. They can't block them. It doesn't matter. The three wideouts all split to the near side. Georgia 
Here's just a three-man rush. Mond in trouble. Three men's going to be enough. Drop him right near the line of scrimmage. I think it's going to be considered a sack by Jermaine Johnson. Um, Jermaine Johnson's job was to cover the quarterback. He was spying, spying on the quarterback. He three-man rush, but watch him play Mond. He stays right there, and he's a position to make that play. God. Dan Lanning and Kirby Smart has their defense dialed in. Don't they, though? Yep. <laughs> And you know, we said coming in, number two in the country in scoring defense, obviously tops in the SEC. And this one yeah. off the side of the foot of one of the best players in the country goes out around the 40, I think 42 maybe. The first one, it, he kind of outkicked his coverage, and this one he shanks it out of bounds. I'm about seven yards wrong there. I'm <laughs> pretty good to spot that one. J.R. Reed, big part of that last defensive stop for the Dogs. Roberts with a motion man, and it's a flu flicker. Fine loads going deep. Manzel just missed man. Pickens. Needed to pull the string on it just a little bit, and it would have been a touchdown. Great position on the field to call this. It's almost like a turnover. The punt here's Pickens, how he lined up, and you get great physical position running the ball so well. You got him. Safety can't get there, but what half a yard, yep. a yard. A bit too long. Pickens laid out, got one hand on it, maybe. And yeah, just the back Pickens end of the ball. And he's six foot five and he couldn't reach it. That's two now that absolutely and Jake had put it on at the touchdowns. Draw play to Harry in. That'll lose a couple. Jaden Peavy and I'm a stop. And remember last time on second down and third down, I believe. AM came with pressure from the edge on Jake Fromm. They must not feel, with as good a record, only six sacks all year, stat that that Georgia offensive line has. If they can't put pressure they, on them any other way but to bring extra players. Georgia's offense going the wrong way on this drive, and now a bad snap. Well, Fromm wasn't ready for it, and he has to lay on it at the 30 yard line. I think Jake looked away and Trey Hill let it go. Oh yeah, Jake Fromm was not ready for that, no doubt. He was still pointing out formations or protections, trying to put people in motion. And uh, you know, that one at home, you might understand if you're on the road right. doing that, but that at home is hard to explain. There's his big 335 pound center, Trey Hill. Even then complete down the field would help him. Spiller behind Mond in the pistol set here on first down from the 17. Mond does want to throw downfield. He might not get the chance. Throws late, and he got it to the 40. Jamon Osmond. So just as Gary called it, he hooks up with his number one receiver. Yeah, no doubt the Georgia defensive backs are squatting on the slants. They're playing physical on the corners. And that's actually what Kirby told Ness and I on Friday, that he's nervous about the size of those Aggie receivers. You see the play right there. Got Trayvon Walker in there, the freshman on the defensive line again. He made the big play at the end of the Auburn game. Four wide out group in here. Keeping it on the ground, Spiller goes the same way. This time, not the same result. He lost a yard. Get the feeling that for AM to be able to open up this running attack, they also are going to have to commit to running the quarterback a little bit more. You know, they threw one deep ball, but the regular run plays right now, the Georgia defense too quick for them. Trayvon Walker, the guy just talked about, is the man that made the stop and forces a third down and five. Crowd trying to get into it for the Georgia defense. And Georgia has three true freshmen on the field for them in this package. Bodes well for the future, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Mond, not hit as he threw, and it's tipped and knocked away. Incomplete. Yeah, Intended was, for Kendrick Rogers. Yeah. It was a corner blitz coming off the edge again. 
both coordinators are trying to attack the quarterback with blitzes, and you can see it was missed that time. Spiller went out too fast. He was responsible for the corner cap. Great blitz by Eric Stokes, and that affected that throw for sure because Mon got this right when he let go of the ball. Yep. Nobody tougher than Kellen Mon, though. He That's for sure. takes some hits, boy. High snap. Punt. He'll bounce down inside the 10. Well, Great fun. roll for the Aggies. Yeah, finally, the field has been flipped for the Aggies. Boy, it's been flipped all the way to the one-yard line. That's what you do when you're a good punter. His previous attempt, not so much. That 54-yarder will have Georgia buried at its own one-yard line. Here comes a blitz from the secondary. Fon loads it, fires deep sideline, and again, overshot Pickens, who was looking for a flag and didn't get one. So Jake Fromm has had a couple of opportunities to make big plays. He had Harry at first coming out of the backfield. Could have been a touchdown, and then he had Pickens on the flea flicker. Missed him, and you know what he's done because of that? That's took his glove, glove off. off. Yep. yep, going without the glove, the heck with that. Fromm on a slant, and he hit this guy right between the numbers, and he dropped it. It was... Demetrius Robertson. I thought it was curious. Jackson was a tenor. Maybe Robinson. It was. Yep, yeah, you're right. It was, and yeah, you don't throw him any better than that. And you know what happens is, you watch last week. Auburn had a lot of success with the slam. Yeah, they did. Why don't we do that? <laughs> and they do it, and they drop it. So everybody's three and outing so far. Kamada got a beauty last time, kicking from his own end zone. This one not so good. It'll be returnable from the 45 for Courtney Davis. Davis looking for a block, got to the edge. Courtney Davis all the way down to the Georgia 35. Great punt return, and now the Aggies are in prime real estate on the Georgia end of the field. Way they're not going to punt. If it was me, I'd think about finally di dialing up the quarterback run right here. Third and three, following the timeout. Three tight ends on the field. Including Baldry, who's in the backfield with Kalamon. Play action wide open. Here's Baldry, and he's got the first down at the quarter. That is so old school right there. We used to call it 626, fullback flat. Baldry is the fullback on this play, even though he's in an H position. He ends up being the fullback. You run it off tackle. Got the tight ends right there and slip them right back by the end man of the line of scrimmage. Giving the fullback some sugar and a first down. His first catch of the year. You ready for that? <laughs> Brings the quarter to an end. AM threatening though. Fourth rank Georgia has their hands full against the Aggies, leading just 3 0. see the rain intensifying a little bit. Hardest all day, I think, right now. Ball security on a day like this is big. Both backs are in there that Gary talked about. That full house backfield. With Mond between Richardson and Spiller. And he's going to run it here. Kellen Mond, great wheels for a quarterback. Got five. LeCount in on the stop along with Monty Rice. Yeah, I think that's what they're going to need to open the game up. But uh, number two, the safety. Reads it fast and gets up there and stops Kellen Mond quickly. And I thought Kellen Mond kind of was shaking his head. Kellen was a little bit after that hit. It looked like LeCount got him around the helmet. And it's become a bigger play now. Third down and 10. One third down conversion between the two teams so far. for Georgia. Mon double clutches, goes down the middle and completes. Intended for his tight end. I thought he fell down on the play. Weidermeyer did. After he released the ball, Weidermeyer tried to get to the middle of the field. I, it appeared out of the side of my eye that he slipped on the play. He's going to try to come in, look from the right side of your screen. And he's going to try to yep, get into the end. Right. He did. Fell down on the play. So that'll bring on Seth Small, who's 15 of 20 on the year. Braden Mann to hold. It'll be a 37-yard attempt to try to tie the game. And he tucked it in the right uprights. 
So we're even now with 13-29. Remaining first half. The Aggies with the field goal. Even things off with the fourth ranked Bulldogs. Samir White, Ryan Harry waiting on the kick. Brian Harrion from the five. Harrion got to the next level. The kicker's got to knock him down at the 45-yard line. So there's one of the 24 seniors today. A 40-yard kick return for Brian Harrion. He's one of those forgotten men who now no longer is overlooked. He's just too good of a football player. And as told you in the open, and when it's senior day, he catches the ball, he blocks, uh, he does it all. He's just a really well-rounded football player. And a touchdown catch last week in the win over Auburn, and he sets Georgia's offense up in great shape at their own 46. And a and has stopped number seven, Swift. And a five, he's only got, he just have not been able to establish the Andrew Swift. Turn that out of there. <laughs> DeAndre goes out for about he's the guy. 16. He, he's the guy. You he know, really is. He's really coming on. He had a great practice on Thursday. He's the difference maker. Seems like a big play waiting to happen. He if does. It just happens. And Jake missed him earlier in the game. From back to throw here. Scans the field. Has all day. He missed again. Missed Demetrius Robertson yeah, by a mile. He did. Big from struggling right now. Here. Maybe they did. Maybe they were going to just try to draw him off sides for the first down and kick the field goal anyway. I think Jimbo's faster than Kirby right now to the, the <laughs> official call and timeout. Now Rodrigo's one for one today from 41. And His I, longest this year is 50. And the wind is left to right. He's got the wind behind him. He'll try this one from 49 to try to give Georgia the lead back. Maybe the most popular kicker in college football. As we said earlier, he gets the biggest ovation from the crowd here in Athens every time his name's announced. And he might get some more cheers here. If that makes it, and it does. Kind of a knuckleball, but I think he'll take it. Rodrigo Blankenship from 49. 6-3 Georgia. Starting to look like the Kentucky game a yeah. little bit. <laughs> I think we should go down to Jamie. It doesn't look that bad from up here. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you where I am right now. I'm hiding under a tent because of what you're showing on the screen right now. Holy I am soaked because so I can only imagine what Hot Rod feels like. Like a chip who hit the field goal. 411 points now as he kicks off. And it'll be at the 25-yard line for Texas A&M. See Marty Rice calling the defense, shifting his defensive front from his linebacker position on second and 13. Mon getting some pressure and down he goes. Big Jordan Davis. <laughs> and that's what you call a bull rush right there. Bull rush it right up there, just keep pushing. 330 pounds of bullying. Yeah, absolutely. Right in the middle. Just keep pushing and pushing and pushing and Mott runs right into the wall. First solo sack for the big guy this year. And it puts AM in a really tough third down spot. Third and 19. Yeah, potential uh, make a mistake spot if you're a, a, a offense in this situation. And with that in mind, they'll just keep yep. it on the ground and punt it. No exactly, game. Exactly. They don't want to take, make a bad play in the rain and make a mistake and end the game early. That nickel package and nowhere to run. Jermaine Johnson and the Kobe Dean, a true freshman outside linebacker, combine on the hit. Well, maybe number 11, but so far one for seven, four seven for Jake. The gloves back on. First down for the dogs at the 35-yard line. Hand off. DeAndre Swift got back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. You know, and, and that's the challenge for James Coley, the offensive coordinator for Georgia right now. He's got a quarterback that's a little off. And the skill, as you look at James right there, there in and right next to you right here, is you're not just calling plays. You've got a sense that your quarterback is struggling. So you've got to help him out. 
Give him a couple easy throws so he can gain his confidence back right now. And they change up the receiving core as Pickens comes out. All three wide outs to the near side. And again, to give to Swift. Looking for blockers. Try to hurdle and that didn't work. And that's back to back. Big time plays from the secondary. Leon O'Neill that time. Yeah, and we asked defensive coordinator Mike Elko if you could pick one guy out to have a big game. Who do you say it has? Leon O'Neill. Yep. Number nine. He said he's the guy that has to recognize pass, run quickly, and get up there. From back shoulder throw. There he got one to Tyler Simmons. First down. Finally, something clicked for Jake Fromm. Miles Jones in coverage, number 10 for AM. Underthrown ball, but there's nobody in college football that likes throwing the ball outside the numbers more than Jake Fromm. 27 yard pickup, biggest play of the day so far for the Georgia offense. To the 37 of AM. Play action, and now Fromm's going the other way, and that is caught as well. Kiaris Jackson, same kind of play, only to the right instead of the left. So we talked about what James Coley could do to get his quarterback going. Now, see, we're talking about this when Fromm was throwing balls. Does anybody throw the ball to the outside loves, better than him? He loves outside the hashes out right there. And I think Coley knew that. He dialed up a couple of comfortable throws for his quarterback, and now you got to believe Jake is in gear. Pickups are 27 and 22. Georgia in the red zone leading the country. 98%. That is 39 out of 40. Trips in there to get points. Run away for Zamir White. And Jake Fromm has to eat that one. Yeah. Zamir White shifted over just before the snap. And you don't know if he was supposed to or not. But watch Zamir White shift. And then Fromm thinks he's to his right. But he was not. No. And Zeus disappeared on Jake. And Jake yeah. had to carry that one himself. And White goes out, James Cook comes in to the Georgia backfield. So back-to-back -back big throws, and a loss on that carry by Fromm. Makes it second down and 11. Here's Jackson in motion toward the ball. Fromm to throw, looking left. And now comes back to the right with a wobbler intended for Wolf incomplete. The crowd reacted because James Cook was open early and Jake Fromm did not see it. For a, you know, a second down throw, he had an easy throw to the outside and Jake just did not see it. His eyes were looking at something else. See, see Cook right there? Yep. He's got a good eight, ten yards on the play. Instead, it brings up third and long. Swift back in and a four receiver group including Pickens the freshman down to the bottom of your screen Fromm throws quickly throws perfect to Pickens touchdown Georgia you know there's a connection if you practice well, you'll usually play well. And Pickles was on fire on Thursday on the practice field. Watch him beat Renfro at the line. He actually grabbed Renfro and threw him down. That's why, to be honest, Renfro was upset. Right at the line of scrimmage, he grabbed him and kind of went by him. Georgia pads its lead with 6.44 remaining in the first half. Right, again, right at the beginning of the play, watch Pickens grab, grab Renfro and pull him down with the face mask. That's what got the separation. Now watch Renfro turn around and go, come on. The guy's 6'6", six, six, and he can do that. No way I could cover him. Jake Fromm finally warms up for Georgia. 65-yard drive and seven plays. Most of it from the capper was to Pickens, 13-3. And the full house backfield for the Aggies. Lauren clapping for it, asking for it, running with it, going nowhere. Devontae Wyatt again on the stop. Well, no one has been able to uh, run effectively, effectively against this Georgia defense. The thought was, as well as AM's been running it, they would give them a big challenge. So far, nothing. Georgia nothing. came in ranks number one in the conference, number three in the country, and allowing only. 76 yards a game on the ground and of course last week they gave up their first rushing touchdown and that was Bo Nix the quarterback for Auburn 
Second down and ten. Kevin Mond throws it out in the flat to Spiller. And Spiller wrapped up. Nice job defensively by Devon Wilson. As the tight end Weidermeyer is on the left side, but he's backpedaling to help protect his quarterback. And Mond, deep middle, missed Kendrick Rogers, incomplete. That'll bring up fourth down. You see the sun-drenched upper deck now of Sanford Stadium. Those people are going, we get to dry out right now. Yeah. This is awesome. I remember a month and a half ago, everybody did not want to be in the sun. <laughs> remember true. that? Those hot days? Now we, they're like, I want to be in the sun. We were asking for the fans up here. Yes. Now we're looking for umbrellas. So now do you start to ride Jake Fromm again? Because he has a hot hand. He's going to toss to Andre Swift. DeAndre Swift. Into the second level and the third as well, down to the 40-yard line. For years and years and years, Georgia ran the toss sweep. This is the modern version of the toss sweep from the shotgun position. Get it out of your hand, get your tackle to the edge, and get your best back in space. And he's their best back. I mentioned yep. over a 1,000 yards last year and this year in the company he joins. That's a good group, friends. Yes. Herschel, Nick, group. Noshan, Sully Michelle, and DeAndre Swift. And that's the one, that freeze frame right there you send to all the next recruits that want to come <laughs> be a running back, right? They fake it to him here, and Fromm loads it. Goes, oh! Demetrius Robertson got a hand on it, but not two hands, incomplete. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of confused why he did not go up with two hands, to tell you the truth. He knew he was going to hit hit. He could feel the safety coming. Goes clear across the field. Accelerates. Boy, boy that's one you want your receiver to play out for and go with two hands. At the Aggies 36, Jake Fromm throws incomplete. Intended for Dominic Blaylock. Good coverage out there on the corner. Yeah, Charles Oliver did a good job. He's their nickel back coming on. Plays a lot of corner, but is earning his time inside. This is a big stop for this A&E. Staying in the game right now. They're reeling on offense, but can they stay in the game? They start the second half with the ball. So Georgia's got its offense. Now they're going to no, punt. They're gonna punt. And I'd be thinking, I'd be watching for a, a fake and &M did not even put a player back. They're playing defense safe. And Kamara will punt it. Pops it up in the air and hopes to drop it inside the five. And did they get there? I think they did. And the officials got to make that call, whether it's at the one-yard line, the back judge, and they're both going to have a little so conversation. A and M played it so safe, and with Georgia having three timeouts, there's a good chance, the way things have been going, that Georgia's going to get this ball back with opportunity to put more points on the board like they did to Auburn last week at the end of the first half. Nicobe Dean, I think, is the guy that got the hand on oh, right there. Oh, the kicking team. Howard recovered at the nine-yard line. Down to the nine-yard line by the kicking team. It'll be first and ten from the nine-yard line. Texas there and there. Great yeah. play by Dean, the freshman linebacker on the special team. Yeah. He popped it out all the way almost to the 10. Yep. Not where you touch it, where it ends up. But Jimo is raving about Kellen Mond to anyone who asks him about it. Here he is again, the throw, and this one is right on target. On the run, Courtney Davis into Georgia territory. Can't throw it any better than that. Jimbo said, I'm so happy with him, it's ridiculous. And Jimbo has coached a lot of quarterbacks. Can't throw it any better than that. So the biggest play there, 24 yards, as the Aggies in Georgia territory. Trying to get some points here in the last 50 seconds. Georgia comes with a blitz. Mon lobs it. Spiller trying to make the catch incomplete. Broken up by Nolan Smith, another freshman linebacker. Second and ten. Mon hit from behind as he throws incomplete, intended for Kendrick Rogers. But it was Nolan Smith again. Yeah, one of how those about this guy? The true freshman, he's in coverage the play before. Now they ask him to rush on the outside edge, and he comes and gets in on the quarterback. How about that? That's why they name him a five-star and why he's on the field 
almost all of the football game. And to Kobe Dean, the other freshman linebacker, won the high school Butkus Award last year. So those are two of the most highly recruited linebackers yeah. in the country last year. I, 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 rumor's correct. Uh, Kirby's having some recruiting classes here. Yeah. Hubert Owens with the call. Pass interference on the offense. Number 13, 15 yard penalty. Repeat second down. It's on uh, Kendrick Rogers. Yeah, the, the, if the ball would have been better thrown, Kendrick Rogers goes down in collisions. He's the wide receiver to the field, and watch him run right over. Stokes. <laughs> oh. I think that's a pretty obvious call. Yeah, I think so too. They're going to get out of this half, barring a disaster here at the end. Barring a punt return, maybe, yes. for a touchdown. Or an interception, or you know something like that. It would have to be a disaster. And third and 25, the last time they had a situation like this, they played it safe and just gave it to Spiller and then worried about punting. I would throw one real deep if I was calling plays. Why not see what I could get way down the field? Whoa, there's the disaster, maybe. Mon got back on it, though. And, and Georgia takes a smart timeout. Kirby does. No pun intended. Yes. On the smart timeout. So both quarterbacks have had one of these, and that's uh, a drop ball. And very fortunate he got on that one. That was a tough recovery. And now they've got a punt. And they do have a great punter, but he's had one block this year. Great man has. And remember... But we have 49-yard field goal already in the football game. Yep. And it's a drier field right now than it was when Rodrigo Blankenship hit that field goal. So last time they put a little pressure on man. Let's see if they got the return on. And then they came close. They're shifting around. Blaylock is the guy that's waiting on it back inside his own 30. And this is a knuckleball. It takes a weird bounce around the 40. Tur and turned out fine. Down to the... 34-yard line, somewhere in there. But there's 14 seconds left right now, and it could be a couple of plays as we check in with Jamie. Brad, you know what's ironic about the seniors saying they wanted to keep their emotions in check today is that their head coach literally never does that. Kirby said, that's who I am. I'm never going to change unless it detracts from my players. But the players love it. They know his passion comes from a good place. But as hard as he coaches them, they have an off-season suggestion, which is to work on his dance. <laughs> yeah, we asked Jake Reed and some of the guys yesterday, what do you think about his dancing? And before I even got the question out. Jake said, awful. awful. Or did you say terrible? One of yeah. the two. Drop play. Swift. Here, and now, that will do it for the first half. Georgia at home. Trying to go to 10 and 1. They're halfway there. And a 10-point lead. It's the end of the first half. Georgia 13 to 3 for Jamie's halftime interview with Kirby Smart. Go to Twitter at SEC on CBS. And at halftime from Rainy Athens, Sun's trying right now as we head to Adam Zucker and the guys in our New York studio. Zuck. Just about set to start the third quarter in Athens. You don't have to adjust your set. That's what they do with the lighting system here right before the kickoff to start the second half. And if this was a beauty contest, nobody would win at this point. Well, I would vote for the defensive line for Georgia okay. if there was a beauty contest because they're owning the game right now. Aggies will get the ball to start the second half. with the kick and from the goal line Jalen Preston Preston coming right at you but not getting to the 15 yard line good coverage by the Georgia special teams again so again a little bit of a hole for Texas A&M and Gary they got nine yards rushing in the first half they got 91 total yards something's going to have to start to click I realize Georgia's got a really good defense but the Aggies have got to do better than they this. just can't run the ball actually they have minus nine yards rushing in this game and one sack for five yards and and they just can't run the ball they're right. not going to win the Georgia front has just been the story of this football game when we talked to the Georgia seniors yesterday including J.R. Reed he said we don't care it's just to steal a line from Al Davis just win baby yeah, see? well Georgia's halfway there and a 10-point lead they can smell that game in Atlanta they want a shot at LSU from the 14 Mon he's gonna tuck it and run with it and he got out across the 20 around the 22 yard line Jamie 
And this is Spiller behind the Richardson block. And he broke the first tackle, not the second, but he did get close to the first down. First half trends. Jake Fromm was one out of seven, and then he hit three out of four on the touchdown drive, but he's hit four different receivers. Kellen Bond sacked once, as Gary said, 82 yards passing, and the rushing yardage. I didn't see the minus in front of the nine, so <laughs> Gary corrected yeah. me. Minus nine. AM &M fans don't want to see that. Yeah, either. that's true. Third and one here. Do they even believe they can gain a yard? In the shotgun. They're in that formation. They ran the fullback out for the short pass before. That was Baldry. Oh, and geez. there's motion by Two Spiller. Of them. Give the crowd that one. A little bit too noisy. Kellen Mann was called the ball. Offense. Number 85. Five yard penalty. Third down. They call it on the tight end. They could have just as easily called it on Spiller. In the Absolutely. Backfield. That's a fifth Aggie penalty. Georgia has not been penalized today. Now they're going to see the rush package. Trayvon Walker's in the game. Number 44. Ojalari, number 13, comes off the edge right here. They do a lot of different things with this hybrid look. And here they come with their stunts up front. Mont has to get rid of it in a hurry. Got it to the tight end. LeCount not going to stop him from getting the first down. And the ball comes out at the end, and LeCount's got it. I don't know if it was blown dead or not, but Georgia's got the football right now. It's Georgia ball. As Gary said, the ball hawk, and he never gave up on this, did he? He didn't. And Weidemeyer's trying to get that first down. He continues to fight and fight and fight, and they let him go through with it. And then right at the end, the ball pops loose. I really think that's a good play. He did not lose his forward progress. He kept moving on the play, and I think they let it go. That dynamic duel in the secondary, it was Absolutely. Reed that hit him from behind, and LeCount, his running mate at safety, well, with the how, recovery. How fast LeCount closed on the play. Now, that was a big man he was trying to bring down, but those two guys are as good as anybody in football. So a golden opportunity for the Georgia offense as it's spike squad time for Richard LeCount. And it's maybe scoring opportunity time for the Georgia offense. First down at the 21 following the turnover. They toss it on an end around Kiaris Jackson. They only got a yard. Great job by Leon O'Neill. Another big play. Jake Fromm looked at Swift. Looks back in the middle of the field. Going to have to get rid of it. Finally does to the end zone. Did he make the catch? He's out of bounds. It was Robertson very close, and he's looking at the divot and yeah, telling the field judge, I saying, think I, I was in. I dragged my foot, he's saying, take a look. Ooh, yep. closer than I thought Absolutely. it was. Absolutely. Pylon Cam says, uh, I don't think it was there yet. No, his foot came up when he made the catch. Heck of an effort. Boy, how skilled is that? He knew it was going to come late. He had to drag his foot, but when he secures it, his left foot's off the ground. So back it up to third and nine, just outside the 20. From goes the other way, and the flag down. Might have a holding on the Aggies. It was thrown in a weird spot, the penalty flag. There's actually three flags. Holding. Offense, number 55, penalty is refused, fourth down. Ray Hill, the center, with the holding call. So it's steady, that's the respect he has for Blankenship, the, the field goal kicker for Georgia. You might think he'd want to, you know, move a guy back, a weak kicker, but in this situation, he wants to get him off the field. There you see Trey Hill holding Buddy Johnson. So now it's going to be a field goal attempt of... 37 yards for Blankenship, who's two for two on the day. The senior out of Marietta, Georgia, to try to tack three more. Kick on the way. It's good. So Hot Rod's got a hot foot so far. His nine points. A big difference in the ball game right now. It's 16 to three. Okay, so if you're Jimbo Fisher calling plays, I get here at halftime and say they got to run the ball. 
Jimbo tells Jamie, we got to run the ball. <laughs> you bang your head into that wall. Do you continue to try to run the ball? It's going to get too late for you. Exactly. Here's an onside kick by Georgia. And they are going to get it, I think. Overran it. I think he overran it. Unpiling bodies, Aggies have it. Georgia should have had it. It was Tyson Campbell, I believe, number three was the guy who had it. He slipped a little bit on the turf yes. over there, but it was a perfect kick. Perfect, and the way it died, what a great call right there by Kirby. It's a wet field, so it flops. The ball just stays right there. Watch it. It just hits the wet and overrun by oh. Tyson Campbell. Holy cow. And Rodrigo's going, I can't kick it any better than that. By the way, he just set a school record for the most points in a career with that last field goal, 415 points, and that's second in SEC history for Daniel Carlson of uh, Auburn. Mon on first down. The throw is complete, and it's Devon Osmond again. The defense kept a and in the game. They had to get a stop there. So now it's a 13-point game. One touchdown, and Georgia start to feel the pressure. Yep. But right now, AM has not shown they can even threaten for a touchdown. Remember, they came in having won four straight and five of their last six. And as Gary mentioned before, had a huge game on the ground a week ago in the win over South Carolina. Today is nothing on the ground against this Georgia defense. Second and six. Play action. Mon. Fires near side, completes, and that's the first down to Kendrick Rogers. Boy, that's how you run a play action pass. You get the receiver running a comeback. Again, it's more kind of Jimbo style of offense, old school comeback. Plant your foot, come back, throw the ball to the outside. He doesn't really like the back shoulder throws type stuff. He likes his guys running pass routes. Second and ten. Straight four-man rush for Georgia. Mon will run it. And ooh, he took a big lick from LeCount right at the first down marker. And that is what Kellen Mond brings to the offense that every defensive coordinator talks about and makes him different. He's a really good passer and a willing runner. Inches shy of the first down. And I think he's got it with a quarterback sneak. As the line judge is going to hustle in there and put a foot down. Well, the, the line judge on our side has his foot short of the line. Let's see if the line judge on the other side wins it. Who's going to spot the ball? The old right foot, left foot. Yeah, John it's, that's the one to closest about. to us. And that's... At short. least our yellow line, it's short. Right. Are they going to measure it? I would think they would, but looks like no. They're not going to now. Once they move the ball, they're not going to measure it. Fourth down in inches. a and changing up personnel, bringing in an extra tight end in Beal. A little more beef up front. And Georgia stop a fourth and just that much. Yes, they can. Hard to believe, isn't it? Modern football. Fourth, less than a football, and you run a deep shotgun iso with your tailback. It might as well be third and seven when Absolutely. you do it Absolutely, especially as many tackle for losses. Georgia's been owning the line of scrimmage. There's the third down. They got a spot short, and the penetration of Georgia's defensive line was too much. They couldn't handle it. Jordan Davis it was a load for Georgia defensively on that possession. He says, how about me? I agree, big guy. Jake Fromm, a struggling day, 4 out of 15 for 72 yards. Perrion hesitates and is lost. Of a couple. Third down. Boy, we saw Georgia at their very best on third down against Florida, right? Right. And then the last couple of weeks, third down's been a nightmare. And two for nine so far in this game. So the three receivers, just as Pickens, Jackson, and Demetrius Robertson over to Jake Fromm's right. Just a 
underline a little bit what Ness said. They were 12 for 18 against Florida, but last week just 3 for 15 against Auburn. Brown trying to pick one up here. He's not going to get a chance. Down he goes. Way back around the 15-yard line. Justin Matavike, who raises havoc on everybody he plays, and that's going to be his fifth sack of the year. Yeah, he's the leader in sacks, and this time a nice stunt gets inside. Left tackle that time, Andrew Thomas. Thomas had a, big, a lot of big plays in the run game, but that time, Matabike was able to get a huge sack. And now, backed up, Jake Camardo will be inside his own five, the punt for Georgia. And Georgia's winning this game 16-3, and they've got 72 total yards. That's crazy. No, I'm sorry, 124 total yards. Not a good kick this time. Unless it takes a great bounce, it does take a pretty good Georgia roll. And they're going to spot it right around the 44-yard line. That's where the Aggies will take over. Down 13 here with 6.14 to go third quarter. Away, and it is. Touchdown, Georgia. Kellen Mond and the Aggies working from their own 44-yard line. Mond in trouble, has to get rid of it, throws it out to the sideline, out of bounds, incomplete, as we check in with Jamie Erdahl. Mond, play action. Slapped, completes, and diving for what... Oh, the first down guess announcement. what we have? Third and short. <laughs> yeah. The message across. It's third down and one. Yeah, I think they're going to throw it here, don't you? All three receivers are up top. Mond has time and got it complete. And it's the tight end. Weidermeyer almost took it. Tripped up. Or he would have been gone. Absolutely. And this had to be a perfect throw to stick it in there. Look at that angle. LeCount had a shot for it, and at the end, it was Tay Crowder, I think number 30, that just tipped his toe. Pick up of 20, though, to the big tight end. First time he's made an impact play. And now the Aggies at the Georgia 27. Blitz coming, Mon. Play action, has to throw it off his back foot and lofts it out. Weidermeyer was there, it's going to be a flag. It has to be, that'll be pass interference. On Walter Grant. He had the matchup he wanted. He had Weidermeyer on an outside linebacker, Walter Grant. Tallish, edge rusher type player. He had the guy he wanted to throw to. That's why he was even willing to throw it off his back foot. Had his jersey. Held, held down his arm, it looked like to me. Yeah. You see your catch in the fans, defense number 84, 15 yard penalty on the next down. So, Georgia, a penalty that's costly after they'd gone the entire day. Penalty free. Well, you know you're a Georgia fan when you boo that one. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty obvious. <laughs> right. Second down and 10. From the 12, Mond going to go to the corner of the end zone, out of bounds. Empty backfield for Mond on third and 10, flags down, Gee. whistles blow. Give that one to the crowd. We've been here before, this time it's freshman right card. All start, offense, number 55, five drop penalty, third down. And Jimbo knows that that makes it that much harder back at the 17 now. And it's third and 15. He had a potential pass interference. He had a drop touchdown pass, and now he has a penalty. And it's only going to get louder down there on that end of the field. That's a student body section over there on that hash mark. Mon running out of time, throws to the end zone, incomplete. Two receivers there, and Rodgers and Davis, neither could get a hand on it. Yeah, and I think that's the key to what you said. When you say two receivers there, right in the same spot, it's going to end up right back here. Two of the receivers, that's 
Two guys getting pushed into the same area. Look at that. Their node routes are designed like that. And that'll bring out the field goal unit for the Aggies trying to get something out of this drive that looked very promising at one point. Seth Small will try a 35-yard field goal to cut into the Georgia lead. And the kick is up and good. So the Aggies were really thirsty for seven. They only got three. A 10-point game with 4.14 to go in the third. He's probably, he's probably watching the tour. We wish you well in your rehab. Jake Fromm comes out. Pickens comes up catching. The guy loves to throw the ball outside of the numbers, doesn't he? I mean, he just can deliver the ball. This time, in between the zone. Right before the safety, Richardson can get there. A perfect laser throw. Can't lay it up too high. And look at Kirby say, just like I taught you. <laughs> he, you could see him. He's starting to get it. 41-yard pickup to the freshman Pickens. And a first down, Georgia at the 34, the Aggies. DeAndre Swift made one guy miss. Holy Cuts God. back to the inside. When he plants his foot. Think about that. <laughs> Everything was going to the right, and in a split second, he plants, boom, and again. He plants and then jumps. One, and a double foot cut. That's spectacular. His high school coach calls that the dead leg. Holy cow. It looked pretty lively to me. It was a dead leg and then a two-foot cut. <laughs> Pick up seven. Second down and three. Number three in the backfield now is Amir White for Georgia. It's a little pitch, though, to Demetrius Robertson trying to get to the corner. Got there. And a first down. Georgia's got some things working here on offense late in the third quarter. So Zamir White got some playing time, and he was able to get in to help with the block this time. Number three comes to the outside. Demetrius Robinson follows it, but his running back clears out the last defensive back to make that thing turn the corner. And we told you in the red zone, almost perfect. So you can just about count on points with Georgia. Would love a touchdown instead of settling for Rodrigo Blankenship's field goals, of, of which he's hit three today. Swift switches sides now to Farm and gets the handle. Coming to the left, a stiff arm and a flag. Swift around the left end, the flag comes in. Yeah, I think the flag was on the first guy coming to the outside. Pickens on his block from the wide receiver spot is going to get called. So that will take him out of the red zone, if that's the call. Now well, they're talking it over. Personal foul, blind side block, number one on the offense. 15-yard penalty, first down. And you call it, Gary. So just when he makes a big play as a receiver, makes a bad play as a blocker. It's coming up right on Oliver. He's, he's right there. He's on Oliver. All right. Gets him a little bit from behind as yeah. well. Could have been clipping. Jake Fromm has a word with his freshman receiver. Dominic Blaylock in the slot. Blaylock on the move. Fromm to throw. Screen pass to Swift. Freddie Johnson, great job. Yes. This is how you play middle linebacker. You said he'd make a lot of tackles, and he has. Uh, last time, AM almost conceded three points. But you wonder if they're going to bring pressure here and try to get him out of field goal range. It's getting close where three points means more and more and more. Oh, you're kidding. And it's Brian Herrian trying to break away. Broke one tackle, broke a second. And Herrian all the way down to the 18, uh, make it the 13-yard line. So how what, what Kirby did. Kirby said... I smell that you might try to blitz us and knock us out of field goal range. So I'm going to run something safe where I can't lose three points. And Rodrigo Blankenship takes the field. He's three for three today. The game is three. He is 22 of 25 on the year. And that kick's going to have to happen on the other end. We played three. End of the third. Score, Georgia. 16, Texas A&M, 6. We'll return to Athens right after this message and a word from your local station. What did we do without cell phones, huh? That's a beautiful sight. <laughs> Sanford Stadium. 
At the end of the third quarter, we begin the fourth with a 31-yard field goal attempt by Rodrigo Blankenship, one of Georgia's 24 seniors. He's perfect today. Three for three. He's four for four. That adds to the Georgia lead. One play into the fourth quarter. 19 to six, Bulldogs. He throws. They might crawl grounding on that. That didn't get past the line of scrimmage. I do think sometimes they give leeway to those linemen because they could be the running back could be coming over to block them, so they give them a little bit more leeway. Georgia gonna bring an extra guy. They'll come with four. Mond on third and long connects. And it's a first down to the big tight end Weidermeyer. Boy, you gotta have a lot of guts to make this throw. A minute into the fourth quarter. 13 point Georgia advantage. Ron stands in, running out of time. Completes it to Spiller and he got blown up. Nope, it's incomplete. Tay Crowder put the hit on Spiller and that's why the ball came out. Some great discipline with the zone defense. Remember last week, Auburn, I was saying that Georgia's zone was on discipline. Here's Crowder. Watch him stay in his area. Patient, 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 and it pays off. Oof. And a hit on the quarterback by Ojolari at the end, just for good measure. Third down and 10. With three for 13, as you can see. Crowd trying to be a factor on Mond again. Flags fly, whistles blow it dead. Going to be another one. Another illegal procedure penalty for against a and False start. Offense, number 65. Five-yard penalty, third down. They're approaching Notre Dame's record. For false stars? Yep. <laughs> That's four. There's the flinch. Left tackle. Jimbo's going, we're making this really hard on ourselves. Yes, they are. Well, Georgia's helping now. That's an elite front they're facing. Nothing easy here. Third and 15. Four-man rush. Bond throws quickly and got his man. I'll tell you. Good throw to Courtney Davis. Remember when we did the A&M Alabama game last and I asked Jimbo about throwing over the middle, and he said you cannot have a good pass offense unless you're willing to throw the ball between the middle of the hashes. Yes. That's the third one we've seen, and they do it as well as anybody. And the Georgia fans are having flashbacks of the slants of Auburn a week ago. Yeah, these are the deep crossing routes. Right. A little different look, but, but just as effective. First down just outside the dark 46. Blitz coming this time. Mon, far side, completes it to Rodgers. And Rodgers trying to take Campbell with him. Finally, the count comes over to help clean up. It's another Aggie first down. And I think right now, if I'm calling plays, unless I get a big sack or something, you see the outside route to Rodgers, I'm thinking right now as I call plays, I can't get a field goal here. I got to get seven points. I need to think four down calls right from now, unless I lose yards here. Kendrick Rodgers, after that catch, you saw him get up and tap his helmet. He was saying, I thought LeCount targeted me to end that play. It's a first down at the 31. Empty backfield. Mon's got the Aggies moving. And what a catch, what a catch by oh, Davis. Cut the back end of the ball, it looked like. Yeah, and I think it was Devon Wilson, number one, was on the coverage on the play from the left slot. Watch his catch. Wrapped up just as the ball got there. Great defense, great throw, and a better catch. Man. Ball was almost past him, yep. wasn't it? I said he caught the back end yes, of it. Yes, he did. Rolled out in the flat to the tight end. Georgia can't bring him down. He's got the first down. Yeah, he ran right through the tackle of Tyreek Stevenson, number seven, that time. Can they keep from losing yardage in the red zone? They're one yard into it. First and ten at the 19. Ron loads 
Throws a crossing route again. Osben. Osben. Touchdown. Aggies. 19 yards. Richard LeCount, the safety, had Osmond on the play. He tries to chase him down. LeCount, let it run a little bit. Let me try to find him for him. Coming up, there he is, right there. Watch him run on the play, but he's late. And by the time Osmond catches the ball, can't get there. Extra point is up and good. This is getting interesting with 11-16 remaining in the ballgame. Georgia trying to keep their college football playoff hopes alive, trying to go to 10-1. Texas A&M trying to win their eighth. And they're starting to put it together. 75 yards in 10 plays. The last 19 to Osmond for the touchdown. If you love you say. Just about the same size, too. There, it's a little bigger. Here's a throw, and Dondre Swift makes a tough catch. Down the sideline. Well, what you love about Jake Fromm is how smart he is. Fromm will move Harry and over to his rights. And then give it off to him to the left. And Harry has stood up right at the line of scrimmage by Buddy Johnson. Whew. Yep. He's zeroed in on that one back running game. He can feel it. The late shift, he feels it's going to go the other direction. Right there. Right to him. Beats it inside. Gets by Solomon Kinley, number 66, and makes the play. Just a little too quick, Buddy Johnson is for Kinley. So it's third and long. Fromm will be in an empty backfield. And they've been bringing at least five in these situations. Will he do it again? And now Swift joins him back there. Jake, look out from behind. Down he goes. That's what they did. Aaron Hansford with a sack. Overloaded blitz. They moved up in the line of scrimmage to draw that offensive line in. You move the linebackers inside, and that gets the linemen to go down, and you come around the outside. Well designed. You see it. Andrew Thomas moved in and allowed the blitz from the outside. They brought five again. Second and five. Georgia comes with a delayed blitz. Mond lost one, got a man. Kendrick Rogers. And finally pushed out of bounds at the 40-yard line. So here's what he does. He looks to the outside. He looks right there at Daniel. If he sits, ball's going over his head. If he does not turn his hips and run with the receiver, ball's going over his head. Easy read. Actually marked that after a 23-yard gain at the 38-yard line, not the 40. What a difference a half has made for the Aggies. Yeah, they've just decided to throw it. Heck with this running the ball. It'll be a changeup to run the ball. Georgia brings an extra rusher. Doesn't matter. Osmond's got another one. Diving to the 41, maybe the 42-yard line. The 11 first downs this half for the Aggies. Mon running out of time, and down he goes. Tyler Clark, one of the seniors, with a sack. Tyler Clark right there. Let's see how he fights through it. The senior, his last home game. Inside, runs right through the center and the guard on the play and makes the sack. Kellen Mond looks down. Zone coverage back there. Has to get out of it. Aggies backed up now to their own side of the 50. Mon, screen pass out to Spiller. Spiller splits a couple of defenders. Good game. Got a big chunk of that sack back. And we approach five minutes. Aggies on the move. And a huge third down upcoming. What's Kirby Smart's defense got dialed up for the Aggie offense? It's all of a sudden in gear. Out of an empty set, Kellen Mond is at a hot hand. 
in this half with a third and 11. Mon steps up in the pocket, throws over the middle, in and out of the hands of Weidermeyer. Tyreek Stevenson does a good job. Weidermeyer tries to deek outside. Does he hold him, though? That's the question. Watch Weidermeyer try to get outside and then get inside. Does he grab him before the play? Weidermeyer thought so. Oh, oh yeah, yanked him back. Jimbo is going to look at this game tape off our thing and go, we got about three calls we could have had. Yeah. Before the punt. Yeah, and that was just after. Yeah, there's the grab again. The ball's in the air. He's grabbing his left arm. And with that, Jimbo Fisher, during the timeout after the punt, had a little chat with Hubert Owens, our referee. And what could have been wasn't. And so Georgia's got the ball back on offense. The bad news is Georgia would like to just play three quarters because the last two weeks, oh, yeah. the fourth quarter's been horrible. It is. And they needed three or four first downs to put this ball a game away because they do not want to give that ball back to Kellen Mond with a four down offense. Aga can barely keep his eyes open watching this Georgia offense the last two weeks in the late stages of the game. From throws to DeAndre Smith. We've only got about three or four out of that. Abby fans hoping their offense can get it back. Brian Harrion in the backfield. James Cook's out there as well, number four. And he's in motion. The toss goes to Harry. Brian Harry in a stiff arm, trying to dive for the first down. He's a yard shy. It'll bring up third in the yard. You can know why defensive coordinator Mike Elko loves Leon O'Neill, number nine. He makes tackles from the secondary, just doesn't miss. Biggest third down of the day for Georgia's offense. Jake Fromm goes over and pushes James Cook into the right spot. Gives it off to Brian Harrion, who got the first down. Yes, he did. What effort that was. That's a senior first down. That's a guy that's waited behind some great running backs to get his opportunity. And this time, he takes it behind the big guys up front and gets it in for the first down. We nice to block by Charlie Warner, by the way, in Moraini. One more thing, Ness. We said to J.R. Reed yesterday when we were talking to the seniors, did you know that Harrion was as good? He said, yeah, but he had to play with Tom Chubb and yep. Sony, yep. and then Holyfield Holy and Swift. He just needs a chance. And Harry had said, you know, I press. I get in there for a couple plays, and I try to make big plays. He goes out. Swift comes back in. We're under three minutes. Georgia with a first down. and has got three time left. DeAndre Swift's going to lose about four. And Marvin Leal. Marvin Leal that time, because it's a blitz off the edge, was able to come inside and beat his tackle, and Jimbo has decided now is time to start taking those timeouts. And Swift and Jake Fromm have a couple of words. And uh, Swift and Jake Fromm had a few words. I'll tell you why right here. A&M comes with an edge blitz, which allows these linemen to go inside. Swift says, you ran it right into the blitz. Watch Dondre Swift get up and talk to his quarterback and say, you can't run that play into that. Jake goes, cool down, settle down. Big like Swifty, calm down. Calm down. Couple more first downs and we're cool. 243, it's not cool yet. And down to two timeouts. Georgia likewise has two. Slant, complete. Blaylock trying to stretch it out. He's a yard shy. It'll bring up third down and one. Can they pick it up? Not only that, they put in the extra tight end to boot. Third and one. The toss to DeAndre Swift, and he... Breaks a big one, and a big first down, and I don't think he's going to be in Jake Fromm's face after that run. Help, settle down, settle down, and up sells out for the inside run. Look at the call. Charlie Warner, 89, is able to get the end man on the line of scrimmage, and you're off for a first down. As you said, because of spread formation and shotgun football, the toss sweep has been Georgia's bread and butter since Herschel. Absolutely. Looks a little different now, but it's still there. First down for the junior out of Philadelphia. Maybe his biggest run of the day gets him to 91 on 17 carries. 
keep running the ball. 40 seconds each time, only one timeout, obviously, for AM. DeAndre Swift, a little juke move, and that cuts back to the middle of the field. DeAndre Swift slides down brilliantly to use some clock. <laughs> Man. He can do it. That just put him at 100 for the game. He did. Did he know where that first down marker is? Because another half yard, game's over. At any rate, it's second down in about a yard. Yeah, it mean, one more yard and it would have been more brilliant. Because he did what he was thinking about. Don't make a mistake. Get a first down game over. But I think he misjudged it by a little bit. Yeah, by that much. Well, and Kirby's telling him that, you know, one more. Ooh, yep. And it would have been a first down. Yep. That he was thinking, keep the clock going. 100%. Use, use yep. Texas A&M's yep. last time out. Like, like I said, a half yard more, game over. There's the numbers. Fifth time this year with 100 plus. The 106 last week of the win over Auburn. Another 100 yard game today. Will it be enough against AM? We got 142 remaining. And again, Jake Fromm under center right at the midfield strike. Swift blasts his way in there. First down, Georgia. <laughs> Kind of a funny call. You slid short, you get it again and make the first down, right? <laughs> and now the crowd's starting to react. That's taking the time. That's Sam Pittman, the offensive line coach, and Kirby says, your big old uglies up there just did it for yeah, us. Yeah, take a deep breath. Now it's Georgia Tech before they play LSU. Unless a disaster for LSU. Started out this drive with the swing pass. Remember, they yep. started out throwing it, and then they were able to run it to ice the game. And to do it, four minutes to go, and to ice the game, that's what you take a lot of pride in. Three first downs to win the game. That's your favorite play if you're a quarterback. Jake Fromm will go to 33-6 and six as a starter. The Aggies with a furious second half comeback. But it's not going to be enough. I just get the feeling from the crowd here that they're like, yeah, we won, but ugh, Oh, that's going right? to be all I'm going to hear all yeah, week. Yeah, I mean, don't you think they're like, yeah, it's, but is it good enough to beat LSU? And that's how you measure. When you're in that position, when the SEC East Championship isn't enough anymore, and you can measure, <laughs> then you know your program is enough. That's right. Georgia goes to 10-1. Very respectable game from Texas A&M. Couldn't run the ball. They figured out another way to do it. Their defense was solid. Good, tough football game. And remember, the losses, the four losses for Jimbo Fisher this year now have been to number one Clemson at the time, number eight Auburn at the time, number one Alabama at the time, and now number four Georgia at the time. And the final second ticks off the clock. Georgia with a win. 19-13. Let's go down some happy seniors and Kirby Smart with Jamie Erdahl. Coach, I know this group, this Texas A&M team was going to challenge you today, but what did the whole day feel like with such a special group of seniors and the statement they were able to make? Well, for this group, it's the way they should go out. Look at this crowd, man. Look at these lights. It's an unbelievable atmosphere, and it's creative because of guys like this that care about this university, that give back every day. He goes on the field and gives it all he's got. He's a hell of a leader. Congratulations, Coach. I'll speak with JR now. How did this day feel for you? A oh, win over Texas amazing, A&M? It feels amazing, you know, get a win no matter who it is, senior day. I'm really proud and just to be out here one last time. And I'm going to speak with your teammate here, Hot Rod, for a second. Okay. You get the biggest ovation when you hit this field. What was the final one on at Sanford Stadium feel like? Uh, it was more than I ever could have dreamed of. It was amazing. Thank you. Thanks, man. Well, J.R. Reed said that his mom, Vanita, would start crying on Friday for Senior Day. I bet she's got some tears of joy for her little boy now as they win it 19-13. to Let's take a look at the GMC Game Changer. You talk about a defensive struggle. You talk about guys like J.R. Reed and his counterpart in the secondary, Richard LeCount, who had more and more big plays. Led Georgia in tackles last year. He's one of the top tacklers this year. 
And that tandem creates some havoc for opposing quarterbacks, and it did again today. The stingiest defense in the SEC and the number two stingiest defense in all of college football held on today. Came in, only giving up 10 and a half points a game, and today they give up 13 with a furious rally by Texas A&M. But it comes up short, and so a happy group of seniors and the junior, DeAndre Swift, who had another 100-yard day. And now it's time for the play of the game, presented by Jersey Mike Subs. And the reason for a big smile on number seven's face was this third down toss. And here's that sounded from Scott Howard. All right, 30 yard from our 30. Snap to Fromm, pitch it to Swift. Get him outside, he's got the first down anymore. 35, 40, trip him up at the 42. A quick burst on the toss sweep to DeAndre Swift. They started the game with that play, and they ended the game with that play. And now they're happy with the fans over there outside the hedges. Big win for Georgia. They're 10-1, and 7-1 in SEC play. Their sights set on Georgia Tech, and then the championship in Atlanta. That's going to wrap it up for us. For Gary hey. Danielson and Jamie Earl, Brad Nessa saying so long. Final score, fourth-ranked Georgia, 19, Texas A&M, 13. College football postgame show presented by Rocket Mortgage is up next after these messages. We bid you adieu from between the hedges. So long from Athens.